It's the last of the MasterChef heats. And so far in the competition, nine exceptional cooks are through. Fire! Now the last group of new contestants will battle for just four places in the quarter-final. I could polish off this dish quite happily. Only the strongest will join the others for the final challenges. Each one has to be perfect. Yes! This is a competition that every good cook believes they can win. But can they? They have to dare to believe. These five amateurs all think they've got what it takes to become Master Chef. But at the end of today's heat, only the best will become quarter finalists. Welcome to the Master Chef Kitchen. Welcome to the Master Chef competition. This is our last. Heat. This, my friends, is exciting because so far in this competition, we have some amazing cooks. And today we hope to uncover a few more. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, 15 minutes, your calling card, make it delicious. Let's cook. I'm not a prima donna in the kitchen, uh, I don't think. <laughs> and I just think it's one of the nicest things you can do for people. And a glass of wine thrown in goes down well. <laughs> Lynn, why MasterChef? Well, my children pushed me into it, yeah, <laughs> because I've cooked for them for so many years. And they said, Mum, just give it a go. What are you cooking? Salmon fillet, which I do in a marinade with um, a little bit of culinary lavender. And the quail's egg will be lightly poached and served on top of the salmon because, as such, it doesn't really have a sauce. Your choice of ingredients is mm. unusual. It is a little bit unusual, yes. But I hope that you will, once you've tasted it, realise that it's not such a bad mix. We have got a dish from Lynn which I have never heard of or thought possible before, and that is smoked salmon with lavender, lime, and a quail's egg. My issue with Lynn's dish, regardless of how well it's cooked, is will it taste any good? Or will it taste like somebody's underwear drawer? So instead of this, I'm all over the place, aren't I? Honestly, I'm never like this at home. I think you will probably count on both hands in the five years I've lived with my girlfriend, the amount of times she's cooked a meal. Um, it's always been me. It's, it's difficult to say what my strengths are because it might just be that she's a bit weird and likes me cooking and actually I'm not that good at it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm cooking a sea bream fillet, a deep fried oyster with an oyster cream and chorizo sauce and a goat's cheese mash. What, what is it about you and cooking? Um, I, I, I just enjoy it. I just, I just like doing it really. Um, I've, I've got like a, a busy job and a bit of a release maybe. Um, what do you do? Uh, police. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I enjoy that, but this is like a hobby. I'm looking forward to your food, mate. Hope I don't let you down. Paul's calling card tells me he's an experimental cook, somebody who likes to play with flavours. He's doing us a fish with goat's cheese mash and chorizo, but he's steaming the fish. The chorizo is cut into a big, long piece, a very creative, arty-looking dish. But do those flavours work together? That's the issue. Ranveer, what are you making for us? I'm doing an old deli style butter chicken with some mini naans. Tell me about it. Um, well, butter chicken, one of the classic Indian dishes, forms the precursor to uh, chicken tikka masala, which is Britain's favourite curry dish. Not just Britain's favourite curry dish, Britain's favourite dish, yeah, I think. Yeah, could be, could be. You seem very comfortable, are you? Not comfortable at all, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hide I'm it very well. I'm extremely nervous. But... Are you? Yeah, yeah, but Why? I wanted... Well, meeting you, you're a bit of a hero of mine, so th this isn't the easiest. <laughs> John, it's all right, I've, I've found my favourite dish already. 
Uh, I found my favourite dish. It's a good start, Ranveer. Good, good start to the competition. I guess some people have sports people and footballers and rugby players as their heroes. John and Greg have become heroes of mine over the last 10 years. It'll be great to um, have their opinion as to my cooking. It's not exactly unspicy, is it? It's not unspicy, no. <laughs> Ranbir's dish, butter chicken, he says the precursor to chicken tikka. But chicken tikka traditionally is cooked inside a tandoor. So what he's done instead is he's smoking the chicken first and then he's going to marinate it. Then he's gonna cook it, then he's gonna put in his sauce. Oh, it's an interesting thing to do, but I like the way he thinks. <laughs> I hope you like it. You are halfway, halfway. Just need to make sure all the flavors work and I don't do anything silly. The last minute silliness, which is the, always a potential one. Mark's calling card is all about precision. He's a precise cook. Ravioli filled with mushrooms, little cream sauces, little bits of pea puree, just little bits of things. I just hope it's got bags and bags of flavour. Out of all the dishes you could have done, why, why kick off your competition with this one? Um, I think it shows some skill making the pasta, something you hopefully haven't seen before, and something just a bit interesting and different. You strike me as a very bright lad. What do you do? I just graduated um, in engineering science from the University of Oxford. I knew you were clever. <laughs> Mark, how good a cook are you? Um, I'd like to think I'm pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't be here otherwise. Um, but obviously, there's a really standard around here is also very, very good. But I hope I can go all the way. What, well, really? Hopefully. All the way what? To the final. Good luck, Mark. Thank you very much. Generally very competitive, always like winning. I've got an older brother, so that's probably most of it. So always trying to compete with him or be better than him. I personally think I can do well, but obviously we'll see how that goes with the rest of the competition. Love a bit of lamb. Mm. It's a bit justice. Mm. I've got four young children um, and uh, a cat. <laughs> and uh, I work four days a week. I find cooking my therapy, so at the end of a busy day at work and I've got all the kids around my feet, I will relax by going into the kitchen. Emma, what are you cooking? I'm doing a uh, dukkha crusted lamb with uh, pistachios and spices. I'm doing uh, majadara rice, which is an Egyptian peasant rice dish uh, that has lentils and onions going through it, and a pomegranate jus. This is very Middle Eastern. It is, that's my style, that's what I like to do. Um, I love flavours, love spice. Uh, I was very fortunate to travel through the Middle East a lot as a kid. You know, we did Lebanon, we did Israel, Egypt. Wow. Yeah. Emma, why MasterChef? Yeah. This is my time for cooking. I love cooking so much. I think this is it. I am very, very much looking forward to this, Emma. Good. Well, I hope I do you proud. Emma's cooking food from the Middle East. A lamb crusted with nuts and spice. A rice dish with lentils and vermicelli and lots of Lebanese spice. Then we've also got with that a pomegranate sauce. I hope that all of those flavours that Emma's putting together complement each other and don't fight against each other. Yeah, I think I'm good. I'll be a lot happier once I've put a smile on their faces with my food. You've got six minutes, everybody. Six minutes. This pan's taking its time. <laughs> the MasterChef kitchen today is like a culinary atlas, a culinary playpen. There's people cooking food from all around the world, and actually, some of it sounds super duper. One or two things sounds a little weird. Having seen what everyone else is doing, it rather dents the confidence. But perhaps that's what everyone's feeling, so fingers crossed. Your mash is a bit runny. I'm too happy with it. 90 seconds. This is finishing up now. Stop. Well done.
beautiful. Well done. It's lovely. Thank you. Oh, yours is gorgeous. How did you do that? No, it looks lovely. Everybody's Thank you very much. Everybody's looks so good. Though. Yeah, yeah, there's no duffers. That's the problem. problem. <laughs> yeah. First up, police detective Paul's calling card is steamed sea bream in a chorizo ring on a bed of goat's cheese mash and asparagus tips with a beer battered oyster and an oyster cream. I don't like your chorizo ring. OK. However, if I was playing one of those games, I know that if I went through that ring, I'd get an extra life. And all the stars would go all over the place, get bombs on the back of my car and all sorts of things. I'd go... I like that lovely sea bream with the spicy, smoky paprika sausage, your chorizo. I like a lot your deep fried oyster. That's a really lovely thing. But for me, the issue is the cream. I can't quite do a deep fried oyster with batter and cream. It's a bit weird. I, I, I don't actually think there's very much wrong with your cooking at all. I just want you to take all the decoration away that I believe is unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I'll, yeah, I'll work on that. Thanks, Paul. I've never been under that level of scrutiny ever in my me, me whole life, I don't think. Um, maybe aspects of my job at times, but that's something I, I know I can do. <laughs> so, uh, mixed emotion, because it wasn't perfect. They liked it. I, I thought your decoration was lovely. Mm. News company MD Ranveer's calling card is old deli style butter chicken topped with burnt onions and ginger, served with mini naan breads. I like that a lot. That's about a thousand calories a look. That is, that's marvellous. Um, the chicken is soft and just falling apart. It delivers a slight sweetness and then layers of warmth build up and finish with heat. That is a thick, creamy, buttery, spicy delight. Your chicken is delicious. And I ask for one thing in a calling card, and that's for it to be delicious. It's great. You get a little bit of smoke in the background, the sweetness and bitterness of the onions on top, all the spices running through it. Ranveer, I like it a lot. I'm very happy with the comments. Um, I think I'll breathe a sigh of relief if I'm in the top two. Uh, otherwise, no, this day is going to carry on as it started with me <laughs> just worrying. <laughs> Retired school teacher Lynn is serving lavender, lime and coriander marinated smoked salmon topped with a soft poached quail's egg and served with green beans, soya cream dauphinoise potatoes and a pepper and lime drizzle. I like that. Thank you. I very much like that. I could see the lavender on the plate, but I can't taste any lavender in, in the salmon. Okay. What I do get is, is the smokiness, mm -hmm. which is lovely, and the, and the hint of lime. I really like that salmon cooked absolutely beautifully with your creamy dauphinoise potatoes and your beans. Delicious. The rest of it, the egg yolk from the quail's egg, I find a bit weird and, and iron rich. And around the outside, I feel like I've walked through a Judy Free shop <laughs> and my mouth's been assaulted by a little bit too much perfume. Right. I think it was a, an OK plate of food and I got some good comments. But I'm, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Private tutor Mark has made mushroom ravioli cooked in a sage butter and pine nut sauce, served on a pancetta cream with pea puree and topped with pea shoots. The filling of the mushrooms inside your ravioli is really nicely done, well seasoned, and the ravioli itself is perfectly made. Underneath that, that smoky pancetta sauce gives you texture. The sweet pea puree around the outside, it looks good, but it doesn't need it. You are undoubtedly a cook. Thank you. You've shown a fair amount of skill. 
Well done. Thanks. Yeah, it went to plan, so I can't, can't ask more for more, really. Finally, travel company owner Emma's calling card is lamb with a ducker crust made from pistachios and spices, served with majadara, a spiced rice with vermicelli and lentils, broad beans and a pomegranate sauce. I love that. I love the look of your plate. Thank you. Mate, you can cook. That is superb. Thank you. That is absolutely delightful. The lamb is beautifully cooked. The nuts on the outside have inspired. Your, your, your rice and lentils are, are beautifully spiced, but the sauce from pomegranate is just an absolute joy. I was brought up on lamb and mint sauce. This is the Middle Eastern equivalent of lamb and mint sauce. Yeah. I love it. Whew, thank you. You OK? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fighting, fighting back the, uh, the, the waterworks. <laughs> Emma, watching you work today was a joy. The result of that, and that hard work and that heart, is something truly scrumptious. Mm. Oh, thank you. Well balanced, well flavoured, well thought out, well delivered. I am really, really impressed. Thank you so much. It's very surreal. I mean, I've spent, you know, since I was 15 cooking and to have them like it is sort of like, you know, confirmation that I can cook, you know, that I'm more than just an everyday home cook, uh, which is, you know, certainly what I want to be. That was an absolute cracker of an opening round, I have to tell you. So, well done. Greg and I are now going to choose our favourite dish. And those two cooks are going straight through. My favourite dish was cooked by Emma. My favourite dish was cooked by Ranveer. Thank you very much indeed. Off you go. I'm really, really chuffed, really chuffed. I'd like to think of a better word than chuffed to say, but that's just genuinely how I'm feeling. I'm really over the moon, really pleased. Just to have some kind of positive feedback and to go through without having to cook again. I don't know if I could have cooked again, to be perfectly honest, but uh, yeah, very pleased, very pleased. Right, so no showing off this afternoon, you two. <laughs> Got no to show off. <laughs> that was supposed to get me through. This is a reinvention test. We want you to make us one dish, but using the main ingredients that you used in your calling card round. At the end of this, one of you is leaving the competition. One great dish, one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. I'd like to think I might be able to produce a good plate of food and that it won't just be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Lynn's main ingredient from her calling card was a smoked salmon fillet. What are you making this time, Lynn? Sort of a, a little Thai soup, which I will put uh, strips of salmon into, and I'll possibly just put in a little bit of rice rather than noodles, and definitely no lavender. Confident, Lynn? Yeah, okay, I can do this. Well done. In Thailand, a rice soup for breakfast is a normal thing. Clear broth, lots of chilli, a lovely cleansing thing, but probably not with salmon. You've had 15 minutes, 45 minutes left. Paul must make a new dish based on the sea bream he used in the last round. Jeez. Right, OK. Tell me what your dish is, please, Paul. It's a sea bream sausage um, with uh, the gourd's cheese in the sausage. 
And what, what sauce were you thinking of serving with it? I think I'm going to go for um, a walnut and blue cheese sauce. Right, more cheese? Yeah. Cheese and cheese? No big hoops this no, time? No, no big hoops uh, this time. I'll just keep it simple and concentrate purely on the flavour. Righto. Right now, Paul's put the, the whole fish in a blender with an egg and some goat cheese. Excellent. He's serving that, though, with a blue cheese and walnut sauce. A combination I've never had before. I am frightened. Mark's last dish was built around mushrooms, peas and pancetta. You cooked very well, Mark, in the first round. How are you feeling now about having to cook again? Um, well, hopefully I can show the same skills again in this dish, although it's quite an interesting mix of ingredients. So what are you going to make? A blue cheese and pancetta samosa with a mushroom puree. Have you made samosas before? I have made samosas before, um, but I've never done blue cheese and bacon samosas before. The samosa, what a great idea. However, the filling is made with a white sauce. So we've got almost like a creamy filling inside the samosa with the flecks of peas and bacon. It's quite interesting. You have got just 15 minutes left. These probably work better. Yeah, I think they'll do. Hopefully it holds together. So we have got some noodles now, have we? Yes, we found the noodles. <laughs> Having been panic stricken and taken rice. Did you only cook the rice because you couldn't find the noodles? Yes. <laughs> Watch out for your filling. Is it leaking out of this one? Ah, damn it. Two minutes to get this dish up and presented. Time's up. Stop. Lynn, up you come, please. In her original dish, Lynn flavoured the smoked salmon fillet with lavender. Now she has used it in a fragrant Thai broth with noodles. I like the Thai flavours that you've got. OK. I don't like that with smoked fish. They okay. seem to come from two completely different bits of the world and they're, they're clashing. Sure. I'm pleased we've got noodles okay. rather than rice. But I agree with Greg. The smoked oily fish doesn't quite work yes. with the clean, crisp herbaceousness of your lovely broth. OK. Saying that, should I have not had lunch, <laughs> I would probably eat the whole lot. OK, thank you. I'm very relieved. I, I didn't know what to expect, really, what I was going to be faced with, and I'm just glad it's over and I got rid of the salmon. <laughs> Mark, up you come, please. Mark impressed with his ravioli dish in the last round. Now he's used the ingredients to make pancetta, pea and blue cheese samosas with a mushroom blue cheese and walnut sauce and a pancetta crisp. Love the strength of your mushroom sauce. Like the filling inside your samosa, but the pastry on the bottom isn't cooked. I'm really impressed by what you've done. It's got skill, no doubt at all, but it doesn't have very much flavour. That dish wasn't very well executed. Um, I like the ideas, but yeah, I've got a lot more to show. Paul, up you come, please. Paul has used the sea bream from his original dish with goat's cheese to make a seafood sausage and is serving it with a blue cheese and walnut sauce. I have to tell you, Paul, I am pretty apprehensive about this. Fish and two cheeses, including blue cheese. I tell you what, if this works, you are either a magician or very, very lucky indeed. Incredibly, 
it's not horrendous because you can't taste the fish. You are a magician. You've made the fish disappear from the fish sausage. You make a very nice blue cheese sauce. But I don't really want to eat blue cheese and fish, Paul. Um, I've had to eat a lot of really sort of weird stuff in my life here on MasterChef, but this is right up in my top ten. You had cheese and fish in your calling card round, and you went cheese and fish I'm again this time. Obviously got a thing for us. <laughs> I could have done things slightly differently, I suppose, and, and not add the cheese in there, but I would have had to have thought of something else, and in, in the given time, I just didn't. Yeah, you did well, guys. I, th I, think, I think we've all done okay again, haven't we, really? The problem I've got is I disagree that fish and cheese yeah. don't go together. Yeah. <laughs> I was really impressed with Mark's calling card dish. I thought the ravioli was excellent. I was very disappointed with Mark's reinvention, that samosa. Not a great deal of flavour, and they weren't cooked properly. But I do like the inventiveness. I find Paul's combination of cheese and fish a little troubling, and he's now done it twice. Technically, he made a boudin and make a very good blue sauce. He fillets the fish, he does demonstrate skill. But there is the issue of combination, it's a risk. I appreciate what they're saying about the flavour combinations and, and that's fine if that's what puts me out then um, I'll, I'll accept that, of course. Lynn, I really liked her dish in a calling card round. I wasn't very keen on that salmon smokiness with the Thai broth. However, the broth was really nicely made, it was really refreshing. She cares about her food. We all had some wee highs and some wee lows, so it's just a case of wait and see, yeah. Who are you willing to take a risk on? Who are you not willing to take a risk on? Two of you are going to join Emma and Ranveer, and one of you is leaving the competition. The contestant leaving us is Paul. Thank you, Paul. It's a shame. Um, if I'd have maybe chose a, a different combination, I might like have gone through. Well, it's fair to say that my, my dish tomorrow was a, a, a fish and cheese dish again. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I can't believe it. It's a fantastic feeling and I'm absolutely thrilled. Really, really thrilled. Um, very, very happy, obviously trying to stay in the zone for the next challenges. This is a new round, a new challenge a much bigger challenge. Today, you're not cooking just for Greg and I, you're also cooking for last year's final three. Ping, Jack, and Luke. Two quarter-final places up for grabs. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck. Let's cook. In any competition, the better you do, the more you aspire to do better. It's, it's, it's almost like, I really don't want this to end. I've got to keep my game high, I want to continue to surprise them and uh, push myself as well at the same time. Emma, what are you cooking for a quarter-final place? I am cooking pan-fried sea bass on a bed of spiced chickpeas, topped with shamula. What's shamula? It's a spicy Moroccan pesto, essentially, without nuts. Dessert? I am doing my take on a Middle Eastern rice pudding, which is known as sakhleb. It's a little bit of a Marmite dessert, but I really like it. Stiff competition in the room today, you there know that. There is, yeah, I know, I know. How would you feel if you went home? I'd be absolutely devastated. 
I really hope this is just a start for me, I really do. Emma is sticking with the Middle Eastern flavours that got her here in the first place, and I love them. Spiced chickpeas on top of the piece of fish, chamula. Big, bold flavours. As for the dessert, it's like a, a thick and sweet porridge. The texture concerns me a little bit. I can feel it starting to thicken a bit now. If Emma's not careful, that could be a bit snotty. To ask me, do I want to stick around? Of course I want to stick around. I need to deliver eight faultless plates of food that everyone who tastes them will go, yeah, that boy can cook. Ranveer, what are you making for us, mate? I'm going to start off with a lamb sarg, uh, lamb with spinach, uh, another curry, but a bit more robust than yesterday, uh, with a pilau-style rice. And, and then um, we have a honey and lime a cheesecake with a red fruit coulis with mint and lime. How special does it have to be, Ranveer, to get a quarter final place? These are two of my favourite dishes. I would eat them any given day of the week, and hopefully you will too. Good luck. Thank you. Ranveer understands process, but he also understands the way to somebody's heart. A lamb curry with spinach, fantastic. There's not an amazing amount of culinary skill going on, but if that boy wants to feed us a good curry and a cheesecake, I'm not going to stop him. Chaotic is probably a very good way to describe me in the kitchen. The plating side is precise, but everything else beside that is kind of more of a bomb site behind it. You're making a mess again? Yes, no, uh, yeah, yes. For a precise mess, hopefully. What dishes are you going to cook for us and our guests? So you've got a uh, fillet of steak, uh, we have potato puree, uh, parsnip puree, parsnip crisps, and a jus. And the dessert? Is a chocolate ganache with caramelised oranges and an orange cream with a buttery biscuit base. Good luck. Good luck, Mark. I'll need it. <laughs> Mark's main course, parsnip potato puree, served with fillet steak, red wine sauce. It sounds like it could be really, really tasty, but it's going to be cooked absolutely perfectly and it's going to look beautiful. Chocolate with oranges and a buttered biscuit crumb. Not the most adventurous dessert in the world, but that can taste good. Cooking for a place in the quarterfinals is a bit of a surreal, out-of-body thought at the moment. But I came knowing that I wanted to enjoy every minute of it, and that's what my husband said, just go and enjoy it, and that's what I'm doing. Lynn, hmm. what surprise you got up your sleeve today? Not too many bad ones, I hope, but um, <laughs> this fillet of pork, which I've stuffed with cavallonero, pine nuts, pancetta. And I'm going to serve that with the cannellini beans. And then I'm doing some nectarines, pistachio caramel, and a little zabaglioni foam. Mm, interesting. A, a big departure from your <laughs> uh, salmon, lavender and quail's egg. These it's actually bit, sound quite classic. It's a bit traditional, perhaps, yeah. Look forward to it. OK, yeah, thank, thank you very so. much. Lynn's main course is going to be very simple pork and beans. As long as that pork is not dry, then it's going to be a really wonderful thing. Dessert, baked nectarines, pistachio caramel, zabaione, it could be really lovely. It's just not working. They just won't separate, they won't half, the stones won't come out. So I'm just going to have to go with it. It is early stage and I do feel for them. It's a big challenge and I remember it vividly how I feel at this stage. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I think I'll be quite a kind judge. I'll be looking for the positives, um, but if there's anything that's really bad, I, I probably will mention it. You do have to have something special. You need to have that ambition, the drive, and you, I think, for me, you need to take risks. really like big flavours and wholesome food. I like that, it's good, I'm hungry. 
there's 15 minutes left. 15 minutes, and then we want food. OK, so up first we've got Emma, uh, and for Maine she's making a pan-fried sea bass with crushed spiced chickpeas, chamola and roasted fine tomatoes. Sounds good. Oh, this is the most exciting and most scary thing I've ever done, and I've had four children. That's lovely. That is absolutely lovely. Steady, steady. Done? Yes. Right, don't sit there and admire it. Let's go. Okay. Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, guys, you have a pan-fried sea bass on a bed of spiced chickpeas with uh, shamula and oven-roasted vine tomatoes. Thank Enjoy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice colours. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it smells absolutely delicious. I think it's absolutely bang on. I really, really like it, and I'm not the biggest fan of chickpeas, but those have really changed my mind on them. In fact, I want the recipe. They're, they really are that good. You've got those Middle Eastern flavours running through it. It's not overpowering. I'm still getting the, the, the flavour of the fish. Yeah, nailed it. For me, the best thing um, that holds the dish together to bring it together was that chamula. I could polish off this dish quite happily. If I get it in the restaurant, I'll be a very, very happy girl. That is a very nice, decent flavour combination of salt, spice, garlic and zest. A different mouthful every time you have it, and I'd eat the whole lot. That is very, very good. So Emma's dessert is some sort of Middle Eastern rice pudding. Rice pudding for me reminds me of school with a thick skin and it doesn't bring back the fondest memories. But if she does it justice and I love it, then I love her. It's three, number four. Yeah. Just want to make sure they're all uh, level. Mm. Can you hurry up? Yeah. Because I want to eat it. Okay. Ready? Yeah. On time. Well done. Okay. Well done, Emma. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, you have a Middle Eastern rice pudding, which is known as sakhleb, with coconut, pistachio, cinnamon, flaked almonds, ground almonds, and date syrup. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I really like what she's done. It presentation for a rice pudding. It looks mm. um, smells lovely. Looks great. I wasn't the greatest fan of rice pudding before, and I don't think this has really turned me around on how I feel about it. It is quite kind of bitty and quite grainy. Flavour-wise, really good. The additional textures, really good. I think the sweetness of this, perfectly balanced, but I just personally do not like rice pudding. The flavour is lovely because you've got rose water, you've got a little bit of syrup, and you've got a collection of different toasted nuts. It's an interesting dessert. I've never had anything like it before, but I like it. I really like it. I do think, though, it's going to divide the crowd. I've got an adrenaline rush. I mean, that was absolutely incredible. I actually really enjoyed it, to my amazement. I mean, it was pressure and it was stressful, but, um, yeah, wow, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> I'm just really pleased I got everything out on time. 15 minutes on your main course, around half an hour on your dessert. 
Yeah. How is your dessert? Dessert, they're, they're in the blast chillers and then I'll use the 15 minutes to make the sauce. Just make sure they're set and not frozen. Yeah, okay. For main, Ranveer is making a, a lamb sarg, so lamb and spinach, sounds good. There's a lot of spicing, a lot of balancing acts, so if he balances right, then I'm happy. But also I think the challenge for him is going to be cooking a curry in the time that we've got. Obviously an hour and 15 to knock out two courses isn't easy. You are right, Ranveer? Yeah, just What's wrong? Bit. Probably a bit, more, a bit too much liquid in the um, curry, curry, which I'm frantically trying to boil off at the last minute just to, you know, thicken it up a bit. It smells good. You have a minute and a half left. Nice plate. Very nice plate. Done? Right. Yep, done. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, there you go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So we have a traditional lamb sarg with halal onion rice, chilli onion relish and a crispy chilli onion ring. I must say it's a great honour to serve you guys, so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The lamb is beautifully tender, it's cooked that really, really well but it just lacks the depth of flavour that you're after with the curry. It's a little bit watery. Onion ring's great. The rice, lovely. But the main thing in, on there, it's disappointing. I love the sweet, sharp heat that he's got in this little red onion relish. I do love that. As for the lamb, I think the lamb's cooked beautifully, but the issue is it's a bit bland. Fifteen minutes, yeah? Yep. Fifteen minutes and we need the cheesecakes. Yep. Why are they going in the oven? They're frozen solid. I did say that to you, check the blast chiller. Yeah, you did. Huh? I really love the sound of Ramveer's dessert of a honey and lime cheesecake with a fruit coulis, mint and, and sugar and lemon. And then he's got popping candy in. There's a lot going on uh, and I'm concerned maybe a little too much going on. You okay, mate? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Is it still hard? It's been here so for a few minutes, so hopefully it will have thawed a little bit. You've still got about four minutes left. That four minutes could be four minutes if it sits at room temperature. Off you go, Ranveer, well done. Thank you. So we have a honey and lime cheesecake with a red fruit coolie and we've topped it with a little bit of mint sugar and some lemon popping candy just for fun. Thank you, enjoy. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. I really like the texture in the, the cheesecake. It's super light. It's one of the lightest cheesecakes I've ever had. The sweetness and the crumbly of the base and tartness of the coolie and the, uh, the fruit goes really well. All I'd say is the coolie is a little bit thin, but having said that, it's still got a nice flavour to it, mm. nice taste. I think it all works well together. Compared to his main course, this is much more accomplished. I thought I wasn't going to like the red fruit around the outside of the cheesecake, but I think it's lovely. I think the cheesecake itself tastes fantastic. I believe that fruit coolie. Ooh, a bit of popping candy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Willy Wonka of a dessert, this is. Mmm, super yummy. Mixed feelings. Um, I made some basic errors and wasn't happy with what I put out. But having said that, what I put out was edible, I think. <laughs> 15 minutes on your main course, Mark. So Mark is doing fillet stick with potato puree, roasted shallots, textures of parsnip and a red wine and Madeira jus. 
Yeah, he's got to get the fillet steak bang on. Nobody wants an overcooked fillet steak. He needs to nail this, because um, we kind of expect what this dish would taste like. Did you want those cooked a little less? No, for me, that's perfect. Just pink in the middle. Right, Matt, should be going in two minutes. Done? Yes. Great. Let's Brilliant. Go. So here we have a fillet of beef with a potato puree, a parsnip puree, parsnip crisps, roasted onions and mushrooms. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. My beef is, it's well cooked. It's probably slightly more done than I would have liked. However, having said that, it's not gone too dry. I like the shallot. Um, the parsnip puree is really good. But I think he's gone quite safe with this dish. And I, I, I don't think this dish is very exciting. It looks good. It's subtle. But for me, it should taste of beef and potato and parsnip and spinach. And it doesn't. Are you okay? <laughs> Been better. <laughs> 15 minutes, we need dessert, yeah? Okay. This is where I should have cleared up, wasn't it? Desserts chocolate ganache with orange cream and caramelised oranges. This dish sounds great. Chocolate and orange, brilliant. We know the flavours work, you just got to deliver. Got to go on the plate now, Mark. Just the cream, and we're done. Right, let's do it. Righto. Chop, chop. Hmm. Again. So here we have a chunky chocolate chip ganache with uh, caramelised oranges and an orange cream. Hope you enjoy it. Thank Thanks. You. I would say this is definitely shows the sign of someone who ran out of time. Uh, takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes quite nice. Um, the chocolate ganache is nice and chocolatey. It's not too dense, but I'm not getting any orange from the orange cream at all. It's just normal cream. Eaten together, though, however, it's not bad. A bit of refinement, and you could have something really nice, um, but I don't think he's quite, quite done it here today. What we've got here is three splodges on a biscuit carpet. Cold mousse, cold cream, cold biscuit and hot orange. It doesn't work. Yeah, that was, wasn't to plan, wasn't perfect. So I'm a bit, bit frustrated, um, but yeah, did what I could on, on the day. My rings. Get yourself ready to go, Lynn. OK. What's to do for your main course? Uh, tomatoes, I'm just leaving to the last minute. Right. This got... is the last minute. OK. Right, so Lynn's main is a butterfly pork fillet with pancetta and cavolo nero. She's doing it with cannellini bean mash and roasted vine tomatoes and a white wine reduction. So yeah, she's got a lot of things she needs to focus on here. Cooking of the pork is going to be really key. It's a very uh, lean cut of, of meat, so it's very important she doesn't let it dry out. Look at that. You've got a little dinner inside your dinner there with the pork. <laughs> smells great. Here we go. Well done, Lynn. Thank Come you. On. Take a breath. <laughs> oh, the stress. The stress. You're not even doing it. I'm not doing it. Ladies first. Thank you, Lynn. I'm serving a fillet of pork, which I've stuffed with cavolo nero, some pancetta, pine nuts 
and it's a cannellini mash with a little bit of rosemary and lemon and white wine reduction. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank Enjoy. You. I feel really sorry for Lynn. I really wanted her to absolutely nail this, but my pork is overcooked and when it's overcooked, it's dry. Not only that, it's got quite a dry filling as well. The flavour of the filling is actually quite nice. The pancetta works well and the pine nuts. But the cannellini mesh, um, it's very lemony. The pork itself is going a little bit dry. Uh, the filling in the pork I really like. But the whole thing is just overpowered by lemon. Not nice. Not nice. Not nice. Oh, they're not working, but... So for dessert, Lynn is making uh, baked nectarines topped with crunchy pistachio with a zabaglione foam. Whoa! Sorry. I've had loads of bad baked fruit, so it needs to actually cook through to become soft and lovely and sweet. There we are. Lots of juice in there. The nectarines are not ready, but I I'm really sorry, I can't. So, what are we going to do? Serve them. Perhaps they can get the idea and then they can just leave them. Oh. There you are. Well done, Lynn. We're proud of you. Thank you. Well done. Very Thank well you done. Very So it was a baked nectarine with a pistachio caramel and there's a zavaglione foam on the side. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> mm, I think for me the fruit just need a bit more, maybe just a couple of minutes more of cooking and then it'll be perfect. It's just have that still a little bit of bite to it. I really like the Zabaglione foam. It's light, it's quite airy, it's not too strong. I don't know, it's, it's not something that I would, I, I think I'd necessarily order again. Um, but it's, you know, by no means a, a disaster. lena has got a good idea of flavours here. You can pick out the warmth of the masala in a zablioni, and the caramel has a slight bitterness to it. They're good flavours. The whole thing needs tidying up completely. Um, utterly exhausted. <laughs> you think you've got plenty of time, and then you just have maybe one little glitch, and you kind of have to refocus and get back to where you were. So <sighs> I feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best cook in the room in the last round is the best cook in the room in this round, and that is Emma. Her calling card excited me. These two courses excite me. Emma's a quarter finalist, that's for sure. So, you and I agree on Emma. Mm -hmm. Now we can have an argument about the other three. Let's talk about Lynn a little bit, because Lynn's ideas were great, they were sound. But for me, the delivery wasn't quite as good. Her stuffed pork was a nice idea, but the beans just tasted of cooked lemon juice. The dessert, I actually thought, tasted lovely. Presentation was a problem. Lynn didn't have the best of days. I thought I would be OK with it, but it's completely different than just producing food for your family. <laughs> well. Mark was an interesting subject today because his beef looked a treat, but for me, it didn't deliver the bold flavours I want from steak and mash and parsnip. The dessert tasted really nice, but the presentation there was complete opposite to the presentation on his main course. I'd love to stay off and on, obviously, but if you have to go, you have to go, and it's like getting exam results again, isn't it? So a nervous wait. Ranveer was heartbroken over his main course. He was. It was too watery. His dessert, however, his cheesecake, was a lovely, lovely thing. He cooks food that brings people together, crowd pleasers, but that curry, that lamb curry, let him down. Each day of MasterChef is a new day, 
and uh, on this day, if I haven't delivered and other people have, then, well, I deserve to go home, unfortunately. <laughs> Ranveer, Mark and Lynn all made mistakes. Who deserves a chance in the quarterfinal? Who just had a bit of an off day? Two quarterfinal places. Our first quarterfinalist is Emma. Good job, Emma. Well done, you. Thank you. Our second quarterfinalist is Renfield. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Well done. Lynn, Mark, very close. Thank you very much indeed for all your work. Um, obviously disappointed. I had a great time, I met some amazing people and just wish them the best of luck, really. I'm kind of seeing it as the beginning of another journey and taking with me all the amazing experiences that I've had. It's just been fantastic and I loved every minute of it. See you two in the quarterfinal. Well done. That was uh, completely uh, unexpected. Um, I am. Um, I'm just. I can't. I have words can't describe it. I'm. Uh, I'm really happy. To get into the quarterfinals of MasterChef just feels unreal. I feel like every prayer I've ever asked for has just been answered. This is incredible. I want this feeling to last a long time. I really do. Next time, it's the quarter-final. Emma and Ranveer will join Beth and Arabella to fight for their place, cooking for one of the country's top restaurant critics. It's a beautiful thing. I don't think I could have asked for more. Looks to me like a dissected brain.